Old Shuck? Yes, I see him, I should say, about 30 years ago. What a wonderful night it was, I always remember. The moon was at its fullest. In fact, I'd never seen such a beautiful night. And as I was pushing the old bike, I heard these rattling of these chains. And I thought to myself, oh, well, that's nothing, that's just a matter of a, a horse strand off the marshes. That kept coming nearer and nearer. Local people still talk about the black dog and there are very regularly eyewitness reports cropping up. And I thought, well, I'd better stop here and let it pass. And it was past me as a form as a great big black shaggy dog. And do you know what? There was a gate dead opposite and that passed through this gate. Well, when I got to the gate, that never had been opened. It's not just a fusty old legend dating back to the 16th century. This tale begins in 1577, and deep in the heart of eastern England, a hellish monster appeared one day, outside Blytheborough Church, amidst the mightiest of storms. Closer and closer, it got to the door, while a large congregation sat pensively inside. With a huge clap of thunder, the church doors burst open, and the ghostly black dog made its deadly entrance. Crashing through the building, this hound from hell sent parishioners scattering, killing two, and toppling the steeple through the church roof. The dog's parting gift were scorched claw marks in the church door, and they remain to this day. What is it about black dogs? Why not dogs of any other colour, and why dogs in particular? Um, black is, of course, a, a colour of ill omen, and it is associated with death, so that has something to do with it, I think. But dogs are also such interesting animals from the point of view of their relationship with humans and their kind of role in, in human symbology. The dog is our, our closest friend. We domesticated it 15,000 years ago, and we rely on it for help, for protection, for keeping us company. But at the same time, if you call someone a dog, that's very insulting. A dog can turn on you and bite you. The black dog story has become a very popular legend and narrative here that's almost certainly been passed down by word of mouth. I quite often give lectures to educational groups and to the local school. And a few years ago, I had a group from primary school here. These were six or seven year olds. And at the end, because they were very quiet and rather frightened, I said, um, well, it all happened a long time ago, and I don't suppose the black dog ev is ever around now. And at that point, a little girl stuck up her hands and said, please, sir, he is, sir, my granny's seen him. And then a, a boy stuck up his hand and said, yes, my brother's seen him too, sir. So it, for them, it is something very realistic because they've heard about it from their own people within their own community. So I said to the villagers the next night when I got there, the whole story, and they said, well, that's nothing. That's what they call old Shuck. He roamed these roads pretty frequently. He's been seen many a time. But I said I'd never see anything like that before. These stories tend to take a very similar form across the world, stories of um, creatures which herald the, the fact that somebody is going to die quite shortly or that, that some disaster is, is going to strike the community but you can slot in different animals into that global story, depending on what local belief ascribes to those, those creatures. The logical explanation would be that it was just a thunderstorm of very dire consequences. It certainly was one of the worst storms that had ever been recorded. There's probably never been anything like it in our area before. But because people at that time were very superstitious, they tended to think that anything that happened that was good came from God and anything that was rather worse came from Satan. In Britain, they do tend to be dogs, but they're not always dogs. Um, for example, in Denmark, the kind of black dog that we have in Britain, which guards churchyards and prowls around them to keep out and keep in spirits of various sorts. In Britain, that's a black dog, but in Denmark, um, this is sometimes a sow which is a rather unusual animal, perhaps, to be patrolling a, a churchyard. And if you met one, I think you would be suspicious that it was a supernatural being and not just an escaped pig. Local people have taken it to their hearts. We've got a number of organisations that call themselves after the Black Dogs. We've got the Black Dog football team um, called, called the Black Dogs. We've got a Black Dog arts group 
as a black dog antique shop in the town. Um, and funnily enough, the coat of arms for the town also has a black dog on it. There are, let's say, energies. That's perhaps the, the kind of closest thing I would, I would come to identifying that make certain places feel strange. And then when people are spooked by those energies, then what they see or they think they see or they hear or they think they hear is, is culturally formed by the stories and the beliefs that they know. Do you believe in, in the black dog as a being? Um, the, the stories come across as very realistic, so when I'm told the stories, um, I tend to think that, that it has been a real experience for the people involved, and what they're saying is what they actually uh, uh, experienced and witnessed. Myth or not, the tales of Black Shuck have influenced generations and left a legacy and a legend burnt into English folklore.